you have to know how to measure the noise floor of an audio. Measuring the noise floor correctly is essential for achieving professional quality audio. The noise floor refers to the level of background noise present when there is no intentional sound. To measure the noise floor accurately, you need to examine several silent parts of the waveform. This process requires manual effort but is crucial for ensuring precise results. One method to measure the noise floor is by playing a silent section of the audio and observing the level meter. Sometimes, when you play the silent part, nothing appears on the meter. However, this does not mean there is no noise in the audio. It could simply mean the noise is too low to register on the meter at its default settings, though it may still be present. Another critical point is that the noise floor should always be measured on the final processed audio. Many beginners make the mistake of measuring it immediately after recording. If the original recording level is low and the volume is increased later during processing, the noise floor will also increase. For this reason, the correct time to measure the noise floor is after all processing steps are complete. The ACX audio submission requirements specify that the noise floor must be below minus 60 dB RMS. If your audio meets these requirements, it will generally be considered high quality. The RMS value is an important part of this requirement, as it reflects the average noise level over time. To measure the noise floor, you can use amplitude statistics. For example, in Adobe Audition, you can find this tool in the window menu. Select a silent portion of your audio and scan it to generate various metrics. Once you scan, you will see details like the peak amplitude and the RMS amplitude. It is important to understand that peak amplitude represents the loudest point in the selection, while RMS amplitude reflects the average noise level. In the example I checked, the peak amplitude was minus 63 dB, but the RMS amplitude was minus 73.76 dB, which is below the ACX requirement of minus 60 dB RMS. This means the noise floor in that audio segment meets the required standard. If the meter does not display the noise floor because it starts at minus 60 dB, you can adjust its settings to see lower values. By right-clicking on the meter, you can change the range to show up to minus 72 dB. When the audio is played again, you can observe noise levels that were not visible before. A larger meter range allows us to see the noise level more clearly. For example, when we use a wider range, noise levels that were previously too low to display on the meter become visible. Let's analyze another section of the audio, as not all parts will have the same noise level. When I play this new section, the noise level is close to minus 57 dB. This means the noise would have been visible even on the default 60 dB range of the meter. However, the amplitude statistics are still showing the values from the previous reading. To get updated values for this section, I will rescan the selection. You are watching a lecture from my course, Adobe Audition for Beginners. This course is for anyone who wants to learn to do professional voiceover, audiobook narration, podcasts, or generic voice editing. The primary goal of this course is to teach you audio editing in a step-by-step -step and beginner-friendly way. This course is part of the Adobe Audition Bundle, which also includes some presets that can improve your voice with one click. In addition to the course, the bundle includes two types of presets. If you are looking for a clear, crisp, rich, or cinematic voice, you can get that with the presets with just a few clicks. You will also get a professionally built custom EQ personalized to your voice only. A professional build EQ can bring up the best voice from your recording. I will include the bundle and course links in the description and pinned comments. You can get the bundle from my shop. If you have any queries, please send me an email. You will find my email address in the description. The peak amplitude is shown as minus 57 dB. It is important to focus on the RMS value in the amplitude statistics, because RMS is the measurement that ACX uses to define noise floor requirements. The RMS value for this section is minus 71.55 dB, which is below the ACX requirement of minus 60 dB RMS. This indicates that the noise level is within acceptable limits. Keep in mind that the ACX noise floor standard is based on RMS, not peak values. The meter displays peak values, and some people mistakenly think the noise floor must also stay below minus 60 dB on the meter. In this case, the peak value is minus 57 dB, but the RMS value is minus 71 dB, which is acceptable on ACX. I will now switch the meter back to its default 60 dB range. When using the default range, the noise level will appear differently. This demonstrates that seeing something on the meter for silent sections does not necessarily mean the noise floor is too high. It's important not to panic when you notice noise in the meter. Even if the meter shows activity, the RMS value might still be within the required range. Some people try to completely remove any visible noise from the meter, which can lead to over-editing and mistakes in the audio. Instead, focus on ensuring the RMS value meets the standard. 
Let's examine another recording that has more noise in the silent sections. I have already imported this recording and will now open its waveform. I will select a quiet section at the beginning and play it. The recording meter shows a peak noise level close to minus 45 dB. To get an accurate measurement, I will use amplitude statistics. The amplitude statistics for this silent section show a peak value of minus 45 dB and an RMS value of minus 64 dB. The RMS level is below minus 60 dB, which technically meets the ACX requirement. However, if you listen carefully to the audio, you can still hear some noise in this section. This shows that meeting the RMS requirement does not always mean the noise is completely inaudible. When measuring and assessing the noise floor, it is important to go beyond technical measurements and consider the listener's experience. If noise is audible during silent parts of the recording, you need to reduce it so that it does not stand out to the listener. For professional audio, the RMS value of the noise must be below minus 60 dB. However, achieving this technical standard alone is not enough, the overall listening experience matters as well. During silent parts, the waveform appears flat, making it harder to detect noise visually. To better visualize noise, you can enable the spectral frequency display. In this display, noise appears as darker areas, while reddish patches indicate higher noise levels. The color patterns in the spectral display also reveal the consistency of noise throughout the recording. For example, if different sections show varying patterns, the noise is inconsistent. Conversely, consistent noise appears uniform across the spectral display. To confirm this, you can examine multiple silent parts in the spectral display. If there is minimal noise, only the lower frequencies might show faint activity. However, when noise such as breathing occurs, it becomes visually distinct in the spectral display, even if it appears as a small bump in the standard waveform. When you play such a section, you can clearly hear the noise at the end, even if the meter does not show much activity. In audiobook narration, complete silence is not acceptable. For instance, if you use the silence tool from the effects menu to make a section completely silent, it will appear as a completely dark area in the spectral display, with no color at all. When played, such a silent section produces no sound, and nothing registers on the meter, even if you increase its range to the maximum, such as 120 dB. However, complete silence like this creates an unnatural listening experience, which is why audiobook platforms do not accept it. Professional audio should not include dead silence either, as it disrupts the natural flow of the recording. After demonstrating this, I would undo the silence to restore the audio. To measure the noise floor accurately, you need to examine several silent sections of your recording. This ensures you get a true understanding of the noise floor across the audio. For noise reduction, the goal should be to achieve a noise floor below minus 60 dB RMS. It is important to remember that the meter shows peak levels, so seeing small amounts of noise on the meter is not a major issue. Rather than trying to eliminate all visible noise, focus on meeting the RMS standard and ensuring a pleasant listening experience. If your recording levels are set correctly, reaching the desired noise floor will be manageable. You are watching a lecture from my course, Adobe Audition for Beginners. This course is for anyone who wants to learn to do professional voiceover, audiobook narration, podcasts, or generic voice editing. The primary goal of this course is to teach you audio editing in a step-by-step -step and beginner-friendly way. This course is part of the Adobe Audition Bundle, which also includes some presets that can improve your voice with one click. In addition to the course, the bundle includes two types of presets. If you are looking for a clear, crisp, rich, or cinematic voice, you can get that with the presets with just a few clicks. You will also get a professionally built custom EQ personalized to your voice only. A professional build EQ can bring up the best voice from your recording. I will include the bundle and course links in the description and pinned comments. You can get the bundle from my shop. If you have any queries, please send me an email. You will find my email address in the description.